What's up guys, it's Alex Dam. So I literally just went and got a haircut, came back home, I'm feeling nice and fresh, I'm feeling good. As you can see, the sun is shining, it's nice and warm outside finally. Here in Sydney, Australia, like winter is like ending. It's August, so it's the end of winter. I'm so excited for spring and then summer, of course. So yeah, it's nice to be able to just like sit outside and record a video in the warm. And like, I don't even have the sun shining on me right now and I'm still warm because it's just like generally warm and it's just a good fucking feeling. Puts me in a good mood. So yeah, it's just like great vibes all around. And so basically, as you can see by the title of the video, what I'm gonna do with this video so I'm going to talk about different like lifting equipment and gear that you can purchase um, that you can use to enhance your lifting experience, make it more enjoyable and just make it better in general. Some of these items are going to help you lift better like your actual performance in the gym. Some of these items are just going to, they're going to be like miscellaneous items that just make life easier in the gym. Just, you know, just increasing and enhancing the quality of your experience in the gym. But um, yeah, I'm going to get into that a little bit later on in the video. I just firstly wanted to mention that um, the reason why you haven't seen a workout video on my on my channel in a while is because I actually tore my left uh, my left pec major is torn like it's actually torn not just a, like a little injury it's actually torn and so I, I found that out I actually recorded one of the videos and that's when I found out when it was torn uh, if you watch my Gymshark Onyx review. Uh, the clothing haul. In that video, I went to go do a push workout, and when I went to go do incline bench press, I could only do like 40 kilos, and I thought, wow, this is really weird. That was the day that I actually found out that I tore my pec, um, but I didn't have any confirmation, like, I didn't have any approval by a doctor because I waited about three to four weeks to see if it would just heal naturally, because uh, like, I didn't know if it was a tear. I just thought that I had a bit of an injury, and if I take some time off training chest, that it's just gonna go away. And so I started like training chest really lightly, like really, really light, like barely doing any work at all. So just sort of like active recovery. Still didn't go away. So about three weeks ago, I went to go see a doctor and then he said it's most, most likely a pec tear. So he gave me a referral to go do an ultrasound. So I did an ultrasound. I sat there with the lady. Um, she put that cold gel on my chest and she was searching around for a tear. Um, she was searching around my major pectoral muscles, <laughs> they're not that big, but um, yeah, she was scanning there for like, after sitting there for about an hour, she was able to identify where it was torn, and so that ultrasound confirmed it, I had a, I have a torn pec, and yes, it does suck, and she told me that it takes about six weeks of like no training at all, like just letting it heal and recover for it to go back to like normal strength, and the great thing is that I've taken about, I think two to three weeks now off training chest, and it is honestly getting better, um, when I first had the injury, I couldn't even tense my left pec at all. Like, I would tense this and it was like, it's pretty hard. Like, to be honest, because I've been training for a while, so, you know, it's pretty developed. And then I'd go to tense my left pec and it's like, oh, it's just a deflated balloon. Like, it was like, it felt like fucking potato mash. Like, it just, it was completely, like, gone. And it still is there. There has been, um, a bit of atrophy. So, like, the muscle has gotten a little bit smaller but it's not too much of a big difference. And yeah, I'm just really excited to get back into like training chest again and just like being able to recover um, because it has affected not only training chest, but like I can't really do overhead press. Um, so shoulders is a bit weird for me to train. Um, even when I do dumbbell lateral raises, if I go really heavy, it starts hurting my chest. So uh, the main thing that I can really train properly and effectively now is uh, back, biceps and like legs. So. I mean, it's good because I can focus on those things more. Yeah, so that's a bit of an update with my current injury. And hopefully, I, what I'm planning to do is start training chest again in September. I'm gonna wait till at least September. And hopefully by then, it's 100% recovered. If it's not, I'll take an extra week or two if required. But I'm, I'm not gonna go train chest any earlier than uh, September. And yeah, I'm telling you guys this because Obviously, I want to update you on the situation, but also I want you to let me know, like I want your feedback. Do you, because the last videos on my channel have all been sit down videos. Do you want me to record a workout video of me doing like a back workout, like a pull workout, you know, doing some deadlifts? Do you want me to record a video doing a leg workout? Or do you want me to continue doing these sit down videos um, where I'm just talking to the camera about different topics and just like Q and A, stuff like this, where I'm talking about lifting gear? Yeah, just let me know if you want to see like back workouts and leg workouts or do you want to see sit down videos, what do you prefer? Or just let me know if you want to see a video in general on the channel. Uh, your feedback would be greatly appreciated. 
yeah, just let me know what you want to see in the comment section below. I appreciate it. And yeah, let's get into like why I actually started recording this video, which is for the lifting gear review. And so I'm choosing to record it out here on my balcony. I think it's a nice little bit of scenery. And yeah, so let's get started with the first thing. I'm going to start with the first items are going to be like the least expensive items. So the ones that don't cost as much and then the the gear that we get onto later on in the video is going to cost more and I think that's a good way to structure this video. So let's get right into it. The first thing, this is more of a, like as you can see, these are like clips and so the technical word for them are jaw lockers. Now these are fucking awesome. I really like them. They're nice and cheap. They're about like five to ten dollars. I think you can find them on eBay for a really nice cheap price. Choose a color that you know you like the best. I chose red because it goes with everything. And I'm gonna try speed through all of these things pretty quickly because I don't want to ramble on too long. I just want to give you guys effective information. So are these 100% necessary for working out? No. Uh, do they make your lifts lifting? Like, do they increase your lifts? Not necessarily. But let me tell you one thing. I think the number one worst thing that could happen to you in the gym is when you're doing like a PR attempt, it could even just be a five rep max or a one rep max. Let's say you go to pull the deadlift bar up and then the, the plate starts sliding off and it completely throws your form off and your mental cues and then you fail the, the set. So that's the, that's the worst thing that can happen to you in the gym, I hate it so much. And if you're like me and you don't have great coordination and balance when you're squatting, I really need clips. And are they worth the price? 100% because they're like five to ten dollars. You may say to yourself, "Do I really need these?" You maybe they may be not necessary, but they're like only five to ten dollars if you find cheap ones on eBay. Um, just type in jaw lockers. They're fucking amazing, and honestly, I can't live without them. And I bring them every time I go to the gym, anywhere I go, and they look sick and they work, and they're just fucking amazing because. And also another thing is when you get normal clips and you go to put them on, you're gonna stand there for like ten years trying to gathering up grip strength in order to put these fucking things on and they don't even work half the time those shitty springs these you just open them up put them on lock it it's as simple as that so fucking easy and for how easy it is and how cheap it is for how much it actually helps you it's a mad it's a really good ratio of like low low cost to like how helpful and effective they are so yeah check them out get it grab them i highly recommend it by the way guys if you're enjoying the video so far Make sure you give it a thumbs up because it actually does help spread the video. And um, just doing something as simple as giving the video a thumbs up will help a lot, will spread my video to a lot more people because obviously, you know, I'm a smaller channel. So, you know, just helping me out a little bit by hitting the thumbs up will help a lot. It's gonna help spread the video to more people so more people can see the video and hopefully they will enjoy my content and maybe even hit the subscribe button. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button, if you're one of those people, make sure you hit it. So yeah, make sure you hit the subscribe button and also just turn on post notifications because YouTube sucks with actually notifying people to that I've uploaded video. So if you turn on the post notifications, you're actually gonna get a notification when I post a new video. And that way you're gonna be able to watch them and see them as soon as they come out. All right, so the next thing we're gonna jump into is lifting wraps. Yeah, lifting wraps and lifting straps. So let's go with the straps first. So I've just got normal lifting straps where you loop it through the hole like that, okay? Um, these take a little while to get used to when you first start using them. Um, so basically you put them around your hand like this, like that, put your hand through and just make sure this part, the part that's going. All right, so my camera just died on me because I forgot to charge it. So I apologize for that, but let me show you again. So this part, long part goes there, okay? Now you're gonna wrap this around the bar, okay? It's gonna give you the grip, obviously. Now, these take away grip issues completely, so if you have a weak grip or like, for example, when you go up to a heavy weight, you just don't have enough natural grip to hold the bar most of the time, so this helps you a lot, especially when deadlifting, but not just for deadlifts, these are your best friends on any back day because I use these for almost all pulling movements. Like if I'm doing pull-ups, if I'm doing deadlifts, if I'm doing dumbbell rows, if I'm doing shrugs, I use them because when you eliminate the factor of grip, you don't have to worry about your grip anymore. So you can focus more on mind-muscle connection and actually pulling the weight with whatever muscle you're trying to target while doing that exercise. So I think it's really good for that. And also, I find it really good for, I don't actually use these for like a one rep max or on a deadlift or a three rep max when I'm doing heavy weights. I tend to use these more when I'm doing 
lighter weights and higher reps on the deadlift because if you've done like three sets of 10 before on a deadlift and then you do like three sets of 10 on deficit deadlifts, my hands start to hurt a lot, like the calluses, and this actually helps prevent that because you're just, you're gripping this, so it feels really nice. And then I found that when when I wouldn't use straps and I do high reps on deadlifts, when I got to, the rest of my workout would be almost ruined because my grip strength was not there because it hurts so much from gripping. So not only does it help with eliminating grip as a factor, so you don't drop the weight, um, for example, like picking up a heavy weight and then dropping because your grip is the worst feeling ever. But it also helps like protect your calluses in that. It doesn't hurt as much so the rest of your workout is going to be effective. And these are around like $20 and that's about all I can really say about them. And all the prices I'm saying are in Australian dollars so if you're in another currency, convert it. But yeah, um, for $20 they're worth it, they're amazing, they're your best friend for any back workout. So yeah, check them out. Okay, so next, next thing is uh, lifting wraps. So these are more going to be used for pushing movements. Now like, pretty easy to use, you just wrap it around like that. And the thing I recommend is don't wrap it down here. You want to wrap it more up here towards, because what you're trying to do is wrap your actual wrist joint. So you know when you're doing a pushing movement and the weight is heavy, your wrist is going to want to bend back like that. These are going to help keep it more steady and sturdy. So I start to use these when I put like two plates on when I'm doing bench press. Or I use them when I'm doing overhead press as well uh, with a bar or just any heavy weight because it just helps keep your wrist a lot more sturdy. Again, they're around like $20 and I use them every single push workout. They're your best friend as well. Probably the lifting wraps are bay one and these are bay two. They're just amazing. Um, they're nice and cheap. You can pretty much pick them up anywhere and they're just really effective and for how much you're paying, you're getting such an awesome benefit out of it. And also, I mean, it can help prevent injuries in a way as well because if you put on a really heavy weight and you, your wrists aren't wrapped and then all of a sudden, you, I don't know, you fuck up your form, you could just like snap your wrist and this is gonna really help prevent that and almost make it impossible for it to happen. And um, yeah, I find that, you know, when I'm doing like uh, heavy weights on a bench press or on an overhead press, once I start getting heavy, I can feel my wrist start to hurt and even just like, it just doesn't feel safe and this just helps prevent that and it's just like, they're really easy to use. And a little tip I'll have is like, when you have them on, right, and then you finish your set, all right, so you've got them on like that, don't take them off completely and then go to do your next set. Just loosen them up, keep them around your wrist like that and then when you go to do your next set, Tighten them up again. I used to like take them off and put them on for every set. It was really annoying. All right, so let's move on to the next item. All right, so the next thing is chalk, and I probably should have talked about this with the previous one, but it doesn't matter. So chalk is mainly for your grip. Now, I use this for deadlifts, and I use this for bench pressing. So um, it's pretty niche in that I use it for only bench, bench pressing and for deadlifts, but yeah, when I'm doing a one rep max, um, a three rep max or a five rep max on bench or deadlifts, I use these, because I don't really like using, I always use the lifting wraps, the ones that wrap around your wrist for benching, but with the lifting straps, I use them for higher deadlift um, reps, and for lower deadlift reps, for my power lifting, for my low rep ones, the ones where I'm going really heavy, I like to use chalk and my grip, because it feels more, I guess, natural in a sense, and um, yeah, I just, I just really like the feel of chalk because I don't have anything around the bar, so I'm just focus on my form. And um, so this is a chalk ball. This is just normal chalk powder. A chalk ball, it's, um, it's not gonna put as much chalk on your, on your hands, but um, it's really nice and easy because it's nice in this ball. Um, I prefer just normal powder because um, you just wrap it around your hands, you can get more on there. And yeah, your grip, your grip is fucking awesome and also, a big thing is your hands will sweat, and if you're getting like nervous and sweaty for like a one or at max, you know, you don't want the bar to slip or anything. So, it's just like preventative measures to help make sure, like, you know, you're trying to get every single kilo possible you can to maximize how much weight you can push for your lifts. And um, if you're trying to do that, chalk helps a lot. It's nice and cheap. Find some cheap ones on eBay, or if you have a brand that you trust, I don't know. Um, yeah, chalk is fucking awesome. I like it, and I love using it. And, it, it, and if your gym says, oh, we don't allow chalk in the gym, fuck them, who gives a fuck, be a sneaky cunt about it, keep it in your bag, just quickly ch -ch -ch, put the chalk on, smash your set, and yeah, no one will ever know a fucking thing. All right, so now we're gonna get into the items that are a little bit more expensive. So, first thing is gonna be SBD knee sleeves, or just knee sleeves in general. 
Now, yeah, if you're gonna go ahead and purchase knee sleeves, you should go and buy these because these are pretty much the best ones you can buy. They're actually approved for like powerlifting competitions. So like actual professionals, these are the ones that they use. Um, like actual professional like powerlifters and lifters, they actually use these ones. So these are the best ones you can buy. Another good one that you don't, if you don't want to go for these, are the Mark Bell ones. I've heard that they're good, but honestly, I'll just stick to SBD. Um, SBD is pretty much like the best brand when it comes to any sort of like lifting equipment and gear. So I'd recommend them for like pretty much anything you want to purchase. Now, as I said, these are a bit more expensive. So these are around, I paid around $150 from what I remember. Maybe it was $140, can't remember exactly. And basically, these are mainly gonna be used for when you're doing squats. Now, are these actually gonna help you lift more weight? They might help you lift a little bit more weight. Maybe, let's say up to five kilos, maybe. And the main thing with these is you want to get a really tight fit, which the SPD ones are pretty tight and they're a bit longer. And basically, it's going to help secure your knee joints. So um, it makes squatting feel a lot more comfortable and safe. That's the main thing that I've noticed. I actually went and squatted without these recently. And like, honestly, it just felt really wrong. Like it did not feel safe at all. Putting any more than two plates on the bar just felt like my knees were going to crack. And what these do just help you feel more safe, comfortable and just make you feel like, you know, you're a bit more invincible while you're lifting, which is really important when you're doing any sort of heavy weight because, you know, when you've got like three plates or four plates on, the, on your back and you're gonna go do a squat, you don't wanna be thinking, oh my God, are my knee joints gonna blow out? Or, you know, what you wanna be thinking about is your form, focusing on, on, on the cues that you have and, you know, really hitting, hitting that weight and just what you can do to make your lift more efficient and, you know, you know focusing on contracting your glutes and your quads and all that. So, these are awesome, I fucking love them. I can't squat without them. And yeah, I highly, highly, highly recommend these sleeves. They're so fucking good. And I'll never squat without them ever again. And if I somehow forget to bring them to the gym like I did last time, then I just do really lightweight because I do not want to squat without these things. Um, they're just, they're too fucking good and they're 100% worth the money. Love them. And yeah, they're just awesome. Like there's not enough good things I can say about these. Um, just the, like, it helps you, um, get out of the hole a lot better as well. You know, once you've come down, you hit that sticking point, it helps you push out of that and just helps you feel more safe and secure. And also, if you just wear them around your knees, they're gonna help keep your knee joints um, warm as well. So they're cool for that. And another benefit of these, another thing I use them for is not just squatting. I wear them around my shins. I wear them around my shins while I'm doing deadlifts. And what this is for is to help protect your shins. So if you're doing deadlifts properly, the, the bar's gonna be really close to your shins and it's gonna be scraping and it's gonna leave a lot of bruises and it's gonna hurt. And the worst thing about deadlifting when you're trying to do like a heavy weight, you don't wanna be thinking about, ah, my fucking shins are gonna scratch or anything like that. You just wanna focus on your form and hitting that weight. So what these do is it serves as like a protective layer and you do not feel a single thing when it's like scratching your shins. So I use them for that as well. And so not only are they really good for like doing squats and like heavy weights on squats or even just normal like squatting like eight to 10 to 12 reps, but they're also really helpful for deadlifts and I use them for pretty much every time I do deadlifts. Whether it's sumo or conventional, I use it for both. And yeah, just love them, awesome product. All right, so the next item we're gonna talk about is the Spider-Man shirt, AKA the Onyx uh, Imperial T-shirt by Gymshark. So as you can tell, when you put it on, it's a nice tight fit and whatever you th the powers you think that it's going to give you, it really does give you. So it's going to give you enhanced reflexes, it's going to give you laser focus, just increase your mental capacity and also the superhuman strength is the best part about it. I mean, you're, gonna, you're just going to walk up to a bench, you're going to put four plates on and you're just going to bench it like it's absolutely nothing. You're going to do like five to ten reps. Whatever you're feeling like, you're not even going to break your sweat. So the Spider-Man shirt. Um, it's like a superhero costume that you just put on. It's gonna give you enhanced performance in the gym, enhanced mental clarity and focus, and yeah, you're just gonna be a beast in the gym, and it's just highly, highly recommended. Go out and get it. So yeah, if you wanna go out and hit new PRs in the gym and hit four plates on the bench, buy the Spider-Man shirt. All right, so the next thing, and probably my favorite item to use in the gym, one of the most important ones, is a lifting belt. Now, most people that you're gonna see are gonna have the belt that have like the two hooks and it's like those bodybuilding belts and they wear them around for their whole workout like they're doing like bicep curls and they're wearing that belt. 
that belt sucks. Those normal like bodybuilding belts, even those Velcro ones, no go. They're not good, they barely help you at all. And if you're wearing a belt around the gym just to do like bicep curls and all that, it's not really in the ser it's not really serving the purpose that a belt is made for. Um, that's some dude on the street making some obnoxious noises with his car. Anyways, what the type of belt you want to get is a lever belt. So as you can see, there's a lever on there, like that. Now, well, so, so yeah, this belt is a lot more safe and secure and actually really does help you lift. Um, it's thicker as well and it has a little of a breaking in period so you, it's gonna give you a bit of bruises but that's because it's such a good belt. So if you're gonna get a belt, you gotta get one with the lever on it. So basically, what you're gonna do is when you're not doing, for example, you're gonna use this anytime you're doing squat and deadlifts, like this is the main thing that it's for. Um, it helps push your abdominal wall against this so that it keeps your core activated and tight. And honestly, this is so important, especially when you're doing heavier weights for the squat and deadlift. And not only just for heavy weights, because the reason why I bought a belt is the first week of me starting to do a powerlifting program, I did like a three rep max on, on squat and it was the heaviest I ever done before. And then I went down to do uh, three sets of eight reps. So I dropped the weight lighter and I was like, oh my God, I was just going up and down. I was like, this is so fucking easy. Like this, this feels so light compared to what I was just doing. And I wasn't tensing my core and I don't know what my back just fucked just because I wasn't tensing my core properly at all. And just wasn't like trying to keep safe uh, with my back. So this is so good for helping you lift, especially keeping like your back and your core safe. And yeah, so for squatting and deadlifting, it's like almost, I'd say it's 99.98% necessary. If you if you take squatting or deadlifting seriously, you should get a belt 100%. If you're gonna get a belt, you have to get a lever belt. The best belt you can buy is the SBD lever belt because it has a lever, but you can customize it like without using a screwdriver. Well, that one's really expensive, around $300, so I'm gonna get that later on in the future. But if you find a nice lever belt for around $120, um, and it's about, you can get 10 millimeters or 30 millimeters. I'd probably go for 10 just because there's less of a breaking in period. And most people have said that there's not too much of a benefit to getting a 30 millimeter, but do your own research and see which size you prefer. But well, I have a 10 millimeter and it works great. Maybe I'll try a 13 millimeter in the future just to see the difference. But yeah, um, a lifting belt, 100%, like I'd say go out and get one. They're so important, so necessary for your squat squat and deadlift. You don't really need them for other things. I don't think they're 100% necessary for other movements. Um, but yeah, the mad thing about a lever belt is it sits around your waist like that. And then when you go to do your set, you hook on the lever and that's when it's actually activated and engaging your core. When it's just sitting like that, you can just have it around your waist, chilling, waiting for your next set. And then it's like a mental cue, you know, all right, it's time to hit my fucking set. You get all G'd up, you fucking clamp that thing, it fucking keeps you nice and tight, and you go out and smash it PR, and that's how you fucking do it. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna talk about is squat shoes, aka like weightlifting shoes. Now, I've had these for about two months now, and these are by far the most expensive product. These were, these are the Adidas Addy Powers, and they cost around $300, I think just over 300. So yeah, they're quite a hefty price tag, and for most people, um, that's gonna be more than they're willing to spend for just like uh, weightlifting shoes, which is totally understandable. But um, I was given money for my birthday and I was like, you know what, I know what I wanna spend it on. Um, I wanna buy some fucking squat shoes. And honestly, no regrets, I fucking love these things. And just like the knee sleeves, I will never ever squat without squat shoes ever again. Um, you can use them for deadlifts as well, but for squatting, the benefit they give you is like, oh my God, like how would I, how would I describe it? Like. It's, it's almost like deadlifting without a belt versus deadlifting with a belt. Like the amount of, the amount of benefit you get from it is just like, it's, it's intangible. Like you can't really describe it. It's just like, when you have them on, it just feels so right. Because this is such a hard rock bottom. I mean, it's like, it's, you can't really hear that, but it's basically like fucking metal down there. Like it's so fucking tough. So. The way you describe it is like if you're doing squats on a trampoline, 
you're not gonna do, be able to do much weight because the ground is soft. Like same as like grass, if you're doing it on grass, it's like a softer floor. You're pushing into the ground more, um, like you don't have as much force transfer. Um, so you're not gonna be as strong. Whereas this, right, you've got a bit of a um, dip there, so you can push more off the hills and the, the rock hard bottom allows you to transfer a lot more power from the ground up so you can push a lot more weight for squatting and they just feel right like you know I have my converse shoes I used to squat in those like most people it's like converse is like leg day um, yeah no Adidas Addy Powers or squat shoes are leg day you can also go out and get Nike Romaleos those are a good option as well they're both great but I've heard that like from most people I've seen, they use Adidas Addy Powers, but both are great. So if you want the Nike Remelayers, which I think are a bit cheaper, get the Nike Remelayers 3 or get the Adidas Addy Powers. Squat shoes, they're fucking amazing. And I understand they're totally not necessary. This is more of a thing that, you know, if you have the spare money lying around, go ahead and purchase them if you really want to, or even try them out from a friend or something, um, just because they are pretty hefty in terms of the price. But for me, I want to get every single I take lifting very, very seriously, so I want to get every single kilo I can possibly out of my squat. And if that is your goal, then get the squat shoes because they're amazing. Um, you will never, ever want to squat without them, like, no doubt. Like, I, can, I can't squat without them ever again. There's just no way. They are just too good. All right, guys, so hopefully I've given you a good overview. I didn't want to go too in-depth with every single product just because um, that will take more time, and I wanted to do a overall video today. Um, if you want to see a certain like specific one video review on a certain product like me going into more depth um, Then you can let me know in the comment section below and I'll happily do that if there's a product that I didn't talk about enough Or a piece of gear or whatever another thing is just like get headphones and get wireless headphones They're gonna help you out with your lifts so you don't have to worry about the wires when you're doing deadlifts and squats um, That's just a little thing that I didn't really want to mention as a whole thing, but yeah, wireless headphones are awesome way to go to find nice cheap ones. Um, the Geeky Bluetooth headphones are the ones that I use, nice and cheap on Amazon. They're great, good sound quality. So hopefully you found this video helpful and maybe you like learned something new about one of those things that you weren't too sure about. Maybe, maybe I convinced you to go out and purchase something um, and it's gonna, whatever it is that you go out and purchase or the multiple things, they are gonna help you with your lifting experience 100%, there's no doubt. All of these items I like believe in and I bought them and I'm very very happy that I made the decision to go out and purchase all of these things because they just made my lifting experience a lot better and yeah it's just those like little things that help make you a better lifter and then you can you know if you have the right gear you can um, you can put out put in a lot more better work in the gym as well and another thing is like Lifting gear is not 100% necessary, like you don't need to go out and buy all these items. You know, like you can still lift without them, but um, you know, when, you're, when you go into like more powerlifting style training and you're starting to push heavier weights and you're pushing heavier than you've ever done before, it's really important to think about safety and health and longevity as well because you know, you wanna be lifting, like I wanna be lifting till the day I die. Like literally the day I die, I wanna be lifting, you know? However old I am, it doesn't matter. That means I'm gonna be lifting for the rest of my life, so I need to be able to live for the rest of my life. So, you know, being healthy and uninjured is important as well. So, yeah, just uh, all these like items that I talk about, they're not 100% necessary, but I do recommend them for sure. All right, so that is gonna be the end of the video. I just wanna thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more, and always remember to keep the pump. Come to the river, let me see the water side. Let me slip into